Welcome back, everyone. We are back to our Flexbox image gallery. We have added a Flexbox, right, which is Display Flex. And we're ready to play around with some CSS3, add a little bit of style, add some more things to the gallery and the figure. Just want you to see some of the other options you have using a little CSS3. First thing I want to talk about is we didn't finish going through all of the Flexbox options. And there are some more we didn't do. There's only one that you might be interested. And so one of the things I did is on my HTML, I, I targeted each um, each of these images on the, um, I targeted each image in the fig caption, identified it in order of appearance on my HTML. If you look over here, you can see at the top of the section, you'll see an image number one, scroll down, so I've added these so you can see that this is the order in which they are displayed. So let's go back to the CSS. Notice how we have two of these side by side. Now with two of these side by side, you'll notice image two appears before image one. That is because on the last tutorial, we did row reverse. So if I take the slash reverse off and just change it to row, it puts them back in normal order. Now, all of the Flexbox we did is on the container, the parent, which is the gallery. We haven't done anything to the figure. So I'm gonna show you your options on Flexbox for the figure. So we're gonna focus on all the properties that are there for the children. These are gonna be each of the figures in the gallery. Uh, the first one, we're gonna play around with a little bit. And this is a really handy technique to have. If you wanna put something and change the order, you wanna move it to a new location, you're gonna use order. Now, the rest of these are flex grow, and I can show you what they look like, but you're going to probably decide it's not worth it because of what you do. And then there's flex shrink and uh, flex basics, and, and then like a shorthand for all of these. Then there's a line self. This is something where the height is already set. We are not setting the height, so this is irrelevant for us to use a line self. So there's more of these that we're not going to do. I just really want to focus on order and flex grow. So I go back. In order for you to understand order, it's best to have a flex direction of row or column, but not reversed. Because if we don't reverse it, then everything appears in the order in which it should from top to bottom, left to right. Image one, image two, image three, image four, image five. Now, I'm going to take image five, and I want to move it to be the first image that displays. In order to do that, I'm going to do a thing called order. I'm going to put things in order. The smaller the number, the higher it appears in order. So the first thing I'm going to do is remember, this has to do with the child. So in this case, we're saying any figure inside of a class of gallery. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to actually put it at the top. I'm going to set the order to 10. Okay. So by setting it to 10, it doesn't really do anything. Number one is still here at the beginning. Number two comes next, three, four, five, okay? What I want to do now is I want to target just this, this one figure of number five, and I want to put it at the top. So the way in which I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a class to that one item and change the order. I'm going to go down to the HTML, and I'm looking for image number five, and it's right there. So I'm going to take, it's the figure I'm going to add the class to. So I'm going to add a class, and I'm just going to call it first, a class of first. So by targeting a class of first, all it does is say, all right, this figure is of the class called first, and it doesn't do anything. The HTML, adding this attribute does nothing. It's only when you add the CSS. So now if I go down here, and I want you to see the gallery figure, I'm going to put figure.first. And now I'm going to change the order to one. And immediately image five is at the top. Okay. So again, the lower the number, the higher the order. So what we did is we said all figures have an order of 10. That's a higher number than one. And then on the one figure that has a class of first, we give it an order of one. That moves it to the very beginning. Okay. If you give another one an order of negative one, it would come first. So watch this. If I do a figure and then I put last child and I put order negative one, 
Now image nine, which is the last child, it's the last of the figures, that now goes at the top because negative one is higher than one. So now you see image nine, then image five, and then it's one, two, three, four, and we skip the others because they're already there. Okay, so this is how order can work. And so the lower the number, the higher the precedent in the set of children. Okay, so last child ends up being the first. And then the one with the class of first actually becomes second because of the number, the order. So what I can do here is I can change this to say five. And now it's image five is first again. The last child is now second. Okay, so order. And it usually helps to set everything at a default number. Like in this case, the base number, I just gave it 10. It, it could have been two. It could have been one. It, it's just honestly whatever you want to do on there. So now there's no compelling reason for me to change the order in this particular case. In fact, it actually becomes more confusing to the user, if they see image number five, they're like, well, wait a minute. If that's number five, why is that first? They're not going to know what you did on your CSS. Now, the use case I would do for something like this might be, let's say, if you have some hyperlinks and you don't have control over the way in which they appear in the order, but you want to move something to the right or to the left, use order, and you can change that, the order of it. You can also programmatically do that by you know using a little JavaScript. There's some other ways you can play around with order that you can make some interesting effects. But we're not going to get into that. Let's do a little bit more. First of all, I don't like the fact that the color black on that blue, I think that's not high enough contrast. And that brings me to another just general guideline. Whenever you set a background color, you should always set a color. So I'm just going to go ahead and set a color on here. And I'm just going to give it F0, F0, F0. I got I to get that hashtag in front like so. There. So now we have an off-white sort of color. It's not pure white. If it were, it would be all Fs. Uh, but that looks good enough for me. Uh, let's do a couple more changes to our CSS. You know, I'm not really... Uh, uh, the white is a good contrast, but I think this blue could be a better color. So I did a little research in between the time I paused the video. And I'm going to use a different background color and a different color. Although that's really up to you what colors you use. Let me show you how I came up with this new color scheme. Uh, we began with this background of our gallery right here. And so what I did is I went to Colors on the Web. There are color tools called Color Wizard. And if you plug in a hex value and click calculate, you get some other colors that you can use. And um, I think it was, it could have been this color was the one I used. I'm just going to copy it. These are good color combinations that go well with each other. Um, and on the figure, oh, I had a slightly different one there. Okay. Ooh, that looks pretty ugly. So maybe I will go back to what I had it before. Yeah, I think we're good. Anyway, so that's another place you can kind of experiment with. Yeah, that was the color I ended up using. It was a tetra or triadic color combination that went with it. Okay, let's play around with our borders. Uh, I want to give you some CSS3, a thing called border radius. And what border radius does is it rounds the corners. I'm going to add it to the figure. And so yeah, I like to organize my CSS. Um, I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive when it comes to my CSS. Oh, sorry. I'm wrong one here. i got to add a border before I can um, add a rounded corner. Actually, technically, I don't need to add a border. If I do a border radius like so, and I put 10px, it will round the corners whether I have an actual visible border or not. So uh, border radius. Notice when I gave it a 10 pixel, it rounds those corners here all the way around. And if I change that number to a higher number, it changes that border by more. And the way in which border radius works, it basically creates this curve. And let me show you in a little more detail. All right, to illustrate, I took a screen capture of that rounded corner, 
and I put it in Photoshop and kept the grid on. And you can see the pixels on the ruler up here. We're at 52 on this blue line and we're at 72 on this blue line. And the way in which border radius works is if you give it one value, it's going to be an equal curve. And what I'm going to do is show you basically this as well. Um, right here, this is a Y of 50. Down here, it's a Y of like 72 or so. So it's a little bit off just a bit of what you see, but this gives you the general illustration. So basically, if you give it 20 um, a pixel rounded border radius, we're saying 20 pixels from the left-hand corner to the right, 20 pixels down, puts us right where my little cursor is, right about there, all right? And then what it does is it just creates this arc, like a like that's a right angle, right? So it just creates a smooth arc. Now, if you give different values, you can change the way the border works. So let's go back here. Now, I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to give it a value of 10px. I'm going to give a slash of 20px. And right away, you'll notice that corner has changed. Let's make it more dramatic. Let's make it 20 by uh, 50. And immediately, you'll notice 20 pixels, the first one is horizontally. So it's 20 pixels from here uh, to the right, from left to right. But notice 50 is vertical. And so it's just like this really sort of gradual curve. So it basically just will create as smooth of a curve as it can um, using sort of these dimensions. So this would be 20 pixels to the right of the far left corner, and this would be 50 pixels down from the top of the that left-hand corner. Okay, so that's the way that works. Now, um, I, I, this is for creating irregular curves. I don't necessarily like the way they look, so I don't like to do that, but I will say there's some other options you can do. Uh, so let's say I only want the top left and, and top right corners rounded. And what I can do is I can put 20 pixels, 20 pixels, and then zero and zero. And what that does is it rounds the corner on the left, corner on the right, bottom right, bottom left are zero and zero. There's no rounded corners. I'm not saying you should do it that way, but you could. Okay, and there's all kinds of options for how you arrange the way these work. Okay, that's just one way to do it. I also recommend if you change border radius on an element that contains an image, like you see here, the sharp corners on the image don't look that good. So I highly recommend you do a little something there too. Before I do that, I'm going to change my padding. Um, I'm going to, well, let's just go ahead and try it anyway. Uh, what I want to do now is change it so I want to add any image inside of a figure. Now I'm going to get rid of this code right here. Uh, I'm going to put figure space IMG, which means an image inside of a figure. Notice image one and two are now there. I'm going to also add a border radius. Like so. Also rounds the corner. Uh, we're going to change the padding here to sort of help this out. I'm going to give it padding of about 10 pixels. And I might want to change those rounded corners by the same amount of padding. That's one little technique. It should help. That looks pretty good. Feel free to play around with those styles as well. Let's go ahead and add an actual border to this. And then let's try like a 5px solid. Uh, right now we'll try it with black. And then we might want to change it to some form of white. A really close one. F0, 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 like so. White border. You can play around with different border colors. I'm going to try a couple colors that I generated when I did this list. I'm going to try this particular color for my border and see if that looks any better. Hmm, maybe. Eh, maybe not. All right. Play around until you get a color you like. All right. There's my color. I'm sticking with it. I'm going to go up and add one little thing here. I'm going to go up to the gallery and I'm going to add padding in the gallery. And so I'm going to do a padding of 1 EM 0. 
So top, bottom, left, and right adds a little bit of space. That looks good. Let's just do, I think we have just enough time to do one more CSS3 style. I gave you some border radius. Let's do a drop shadow on our figures. And so they're, they're kind of out of style uh, drop shadows, but I think they're about to come back into style. So I'm going to go off of that. And we're going to add a little drop shadow, and it's called box shadow. There is text shadow and box shadow. And let me just show you how it works. You need to give it some values. And I'm going to do 10px, 10px. This is the left and right offset. Notice right away we get a black shadow there, right? So, but it's solid, right? So like, it's not fuzzy or anything like that. So that's the offset. The next one is the blur. So if I do a 10px, notice it's now blurry. And I can give it one more value, but you notice I didn't need the blur if I didn't want it. Okay. And the last thing we can do is we can do color, right? So we can give it any type of color we want. So I'm going to give a, a sort of a gray. Uh, we can make it uh, red. We can make it green. Oh, not a good color there. We can make it blue. RGB, we can find some other color combination that we like. Now, obviously, I don't recommend you do this. This is really getting ugly. Um, although, if you find the right colors, you can do something pretty awesome with that. I think I'm just going to go back with what I had before. Do all threes. Make it kind of a gray. Uh, I can change the blur here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these numbers, and then I'll let you go. If I do a 30-pixel blur, it's called blur radius. So basically, what we do is we... Pick, like, for example, let's just walk through each of these. The first number is the horizontal offset. If I give it 10 pixels, that's 10 pixels to the right. If I give it a negative number, it switches to the left. Okay? So negative number moves it to the left, positive to the right by 10 pixels. Now, the Y is the vertical, and uh, the positive number moves it down. A negative mo number moves it up. Okay, so you can play around with the different values here, but we have an X um, offset and a Y offset. Now, we also have this thing called blur radius. And what we're saying is, like, let's say this is zero. I'm going to just give it zero. Okay, look at where this is here. And then I'm going to give it, say, 5px. And now suddenly, you can see, it's you take that area and you just blur it out. Uh, basically, there's a five pixel area where it's fuzzy, okay? To the left of it, it's not fuzzy. So the greater the number, the fuzzier and the blurrier it gets. Now, look at where my cursor is. I'm not gonna move the cursor. I'm just gonna keep changing the numbers. Notice how the blur is moving to the right and to the left of that cursor. So if it's just down to two pixels, it's practically there. We go back to zero, you'll notice it's right where that cursor is. So, so the blur actually is to the left and to the right, but it's by the number of pixels that you put there. So 100 pixel blur is, just really takes over the whole area. So that's the way the blur works. Interestingly enough, um, some people will do the following. Zero, zero, and it sort of just comes radiates outward. Okay. Notice the rounded corners do affect the blur radius. So... Be careful on that. Um, you might see uh, all kinds of different variations of this, like a one pixel blur. Um, so just play around with the numbers and just experiment and see what you can come up with. Okay. So at this point, I'm just going to leave you with what I usually do for a default value, which is 10, 10, 10, and then some kind of gray or black. Uh, the other thing here, too, is, you you know, I like to give it even numbers. I like it to the right and down a little bit. That just tends to be where I'm going to do it, if I'm going to do it. Um, and so we're just going to leave with that. Uh, I think I have some more tricks I can do. If I, I might bring some more on another video tutorial. But this should get you going and give you plenty that you can experiment with. So stay tuned for more.